In this video, we're going to talk about the subtotal function. The subtotal function in Excel is uh, the combination of 11 different operations inside of Excel. So the subtotal function can perform operations such as the average, the count, the count not blank, the max, the min, the product, the standard deviation of both the sample or a population, the sum, the variance of both the sample or a population. So why, is, why do we use a subtotal function as opposed to just using any one of these independent functions? Well, let's start by doing an example. So in this example, I want to calculate the total sum of the FMV value. FMV is fair market value. So I would just want to take the sum of all these values. So you might just think, OK, well, I know the sum function. So let me take the sum and select my range. And that works perfectly fine. It gives me the exact same answer. However, what if I decided to, for some reason, filter my data set to just a couple different selections, notice how this sum function does not change. It is still trying to add up all of the values that are now filtered out in my table. And that may or may not be what I want. In this case, it's not what I want, because I want to be able to dynamically filter, unfilter, and play with my data and have a total at the top that represents the data that's being visible to my users. So I don't want to use the sum or the count function because it will count all those values that are still filtered out. The second thing you'll notice is that I put my totals at the top. A lot of times people put totals at the bottom and they'll put a totals row at the very bottom. This is fine if you have a very small set of data and it's not your number of rows aren't going to change. But if you've got a large data set of anything over, I'd say, 20 or 30 items, you're probably going to want to put your subtotals at top so that they're always visible. And you just don't have to scroll down many, many rows, rows in order to get to the, the final total. OK, so we showed you why the sum function might not be ideal. So that's where the subtotal function comes in. So the subtotal function just returns the subtotal of a list with any one of these options off to the right that we discussed. It takes two parameters, which is just the function call, which is you see these numbers here correspond to the numbers over here. You'll also see the same operations duplicated with a 100 in front, 101, 102, et cetera. What's the difference? Well, the difference is these first 11 functions do not ignore hidden rows, whereas the second set of functions do ignore hidden rows. Notice hidden rows aren't filtered rows. They're different. I know it's a little confusing. But a hidden row is when I actually go over to my row and select hide. When I actually hide my row, that's what I mean by a hidden row. When, my, when I filter my rows, say by a, you know, a couple options, even though the rows are not visible, they're not considered hidden. They're considered filtered. Okay, so that is a difference that you need to be aware of. Okay, so for this, I do not need the second set of options because my rows aren't hidden. They just might be filtered out. So I'm going to perform a sub sum function, which is my option 9. So select my option 9. And the second parameter is just a range. So I can just select my range of values that I want a subtotal. Close my operation. You notice I get the same exact sum. Nothing's changed. But now if I filter my data to a couple options, my sum has changed with it. So now this 15,000 is only the value of these three FMVs. Okay, so that's very useful if you're going to be presenting your data to management and you're going to want to be uh, filtering through your data. Um, there, that way, in real time, you can say what the, uh, what the total value is of a, of a certain set of data. Okay. Let's do one more example. Uh, let's do, instead of the uh, sum, let's try a different function. Let's try, um, let's try this option here. So I'm going to look at the turnaround time. So total one wants me to calculate the max turnaround time. Okay, so I'm going to again use my subtotal. And instead of choosing option 9, which is my sum, this time I'm going to choose option 4, which is my max. Again, just select my range of data. And this will give me the maximum value within this list. Just quickly skimming through, 88 is the max. Let's just say I filter my range. Now 60 is my max. And notice how the subtotal changed as I filtered my data set. So the subtotal function is a great function to use instead of the um, normal functions, such as average or count or count A or max, uh, because especially when you're using a table like this, uh, the value will change as you uh, filter your data set. 
Now, one thing you need to note with the subtotal function is it does not handle error values. So if there was an error value or an, 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 a, an NA value in your list, um, then the subtotal would return an error value with it. So to handle that, there's another function called aggregate, which we'll discuss in another video. But for the meantime, as long as all your data is, is either blank or has a value, the subtotal function is a great alternative to your standard uh, counting functions in Excel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.